Thank you, Tim. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining today. Uh, as mentioned, this is Kalima Energy, uh, ASX-listed oil and gas company with operations in Western Canada. So we call ourselves the new Kalima. Kalima recently did a transaction with private producer Blackspur Oil Corp, uh, whereby Kalima bought all of the issued and outstanding shares of Blacksburg Oil Corp and uh, brought on the entire team, including myself, merged the assets with Kalima's existing assets in the liquids rich gas uh, fairway known as the Montney area. And uh, our asset base are what you see here, two producing areas uh, prone for oil uh, called Thorsby and Brooks, both in the province of Alberta, and then up in Northeast BC in the Montney Fairway, a uh, very significant land package uh, proximal to uh, a lot of recent drilling and M&A activity in the Montney Fairway, as well as proximal to the upcoming LNG Canada pipeline, where Canada will finally get our first LNG terminal to by natural gas prospect uh, over into the markets. Very low cost production on the, uh, the Blacksburg assets that Kalima owns now, low cost meaning uh, a low break even, $26 WTI uh, is our break even, anything above that we're making money. And as you can imagine at 60 and $70 WTI, very high net backs and uh, very high rates of return on our projects in the Brooks and Thorsby area. Next please. So snapshot, CE1 is our symbol. Uh, we've got about a $100 million market cap on the ASX, um, $14 million of net debt currently on a $25 million revolving facility. Uh, however, we are a free cash flowing company, uh, actively drilling. And in fact, we're gonna be cash flowing more money than we, uh, than we use for our capital programs. And as such, that free cash flow is going to uh, be used to take that debt from 14 million currently down to 11 by the end of this year and uh, nearly gone by the end of 2022 at uh, around $2 million uh, by the end of next year. Our asset base has been very much de-risked. Blacksburg Oil Corp uh, put together and developed these assets over the course of about seven or eight years. And now Kalima has the benefit to come in and uh, drill all of the low hanging fruit, the development wells, uh, utilize all of the infrastructure that Blacksburg has put into place over the last number of years and uh, really, really have this thing take off and uh, take advantage of all those, uh, those things. Next slide, please. Our guidance currently is uh, to average 3,700 BUEs per day, barrels of oil equivalent for the second half of this year, May to December. That's since the closing of the transaction with Blacksburg. And we plan to average 5,000 BUEs per day next year in 2022. Our exit production rate for this year is 4,500 BUEs per day. That's actually recently been increased. Uh, it was previously uh, forecasted to be 3,400 BUEs per day, but oil prices are up. Our wells are producing better than we expected or better than we modeled. And as such, uh, we recently uh, press released an increase to our 2021 guidance of 4,500 BUEs per day exit. And then in 2022, uh, we are forecasting to exit at 5,500 BUEs per day. But uh, if we're 4,500 by the end of this year, I suspect we will achieve 5,500 uh, sooner than the end of the year next year. EBITDA for those numbers, 27.3 million for the second half of this year, 46 million of EBITDA for 2022. Uh, the capital expenditures for 2022 are forecasted to be 33 million. So as you can see, there's that Delta, that's the free cash flow. That's why debt is going from 11 million at the end of this year to 2 million by the end of that next year, all the while growing production. Next. Uh, ESG excellence. We've always been focused on ESG. We just didn't know it. Uh, it wasn't a thing. It was just the normal way that we do business. We never had to talk about it. And now we are talking about it. We're highlighting it. Uh, we have a number of different factors that uh, fall into the E, the S, and the G. Uh, I'll just touch on a couple. One thing uh, interesting to note is our two main core areas of Brooks and Thorsby, as you can see on the graph, the bar graph to the right, very low CO2 concentration in the reservoir. Uh, Brooks is less than 2% and Thorsby is close to zero. What that means is as we produce the hydrocarbons, there's very little CO2 that comes out of those particular reservoirs in those particular areas. 
uh, especially when you compare it to some other reservoirs and plays uh, from around the world. We also have a subsidiary company of Blackspur uh, called H2 Suite. Uh, that's an entirely different presentation in itself, but uh, in short, we're able to take hydrogen sulfide out of gas in a very environmentally friendly way and turn it into sweet gas and send it to sales in a cheaper and cleaner fashion than is traditionally done in the uh, oil patch around the world. Next, please. Uh, social governance, uh, I'll, I'll move right on to the next slide, just uh, some very standard things under those two headings. The, the EV to 2P multiple, uh, Kalima's 4.4 times. Enterprise value divided by 2P reserve value. You can compare that to our Toronto Stock Exchange peers, their average is seven times. Our Australian Stock Exchange peers, that average is 12 times. So there's, uh, there's quite a gap there. And uh, this is a fairly new deal, the Blackspur acquisition by Kalima. And uh, we've only been in the market since then for about two and a half months. And I think as uh, we continue to drill successful wells and get our story out there, uh, this, this uh, gap is going to close between not only our TSX peers, but the ASX peers as well. Next, please. Uh, this is a bit of a timeline. We've gone through most of this, but again, just to reiterate, uh, 3,700 BUE per day average production uh, for the second half of this year, 5,500 by the end of next year, uh, the, the significant free cash flow at that point at current oil prices will put us in a, in a very good position, virtually debt-free, lots of running room on the uh, Brooks and Thorsby assets, as well as the opportunity to uh, develop our Monty asset in Northeast BC. We have infrastructure in place in that asset uh, that allows us to scale that up to an additional 11,000 BUEs per day based on the infrastructure in place as well as uh, the Brooks and Thorsby, those two areas, we have enough running room for uh, to take that asset up to north of 10,000 BUEs per day, just on its own. So very, uh, uh, over the next 18 months is very key to get to 5,500 and beyond that, we have a lot of optionality. Next, please. Very torquey to commodity prices. Uh, this graph kind of speaks for itself, but I'll just focus on the middle one quickly here, uh, EBITDA at $70 WTI uh, with our 5,500 BUE per day average, the middle bar graph in green, that's $68 million of EBITDA. If oil goes to $80 per barrel in 2022 with our 5,500 BUE per day average, that's $83 million of EBITDA for that year. So every $10, really every dollar of oil price uh, is very impactful to our cash flow and going from 60 to 70 to 80, uh, makes a big difference, particularly once we're producing over 5,000. Next. This is the team, uh, and it is a combination of the, uh, the Blackspur management team. Uh, I am on the board, as well as another Canadian from Blackspur, Lonnie Tetley, uh, as well as three Australians on our board of directors, Glenn Whedon, Brett Lawrence, as well as Mark Freeman, our finance director. Uh, and then one gentleman who came over from the, uh, the Kalima side. Next, please. So again, those two producing areas are, are known as Brooks and Thorsby, acquired from Blackspur. Uh, about two thirds of our production, our, our current production is around 3, 000, a little over 3,000 BUEs per day. Uh, we just drilled a number of wells in the Brooks area, so that production number is going up, but uh, 2000, at the time of printing, 2,000 BUEs per day in Brooks, 850 in Thorsby, and uh, the reserves, uh, 22.5 million BOEs, or sorry, uh, BOEs 2P reserves in the ground in our reserve report. And that's split up as 11.6 million in the Brooks area and 10.9 million in the Thorsby area. Next slide, please. Starting with Brooks, uh, the one, one key piece in the Brooks area is it's a very shallow target depth. We drill a formation called the Sunburst Formation this, in this area. It's only about a thousand meters deep. The wells only take us seven days to drill because they are quite shallow. There's no frack associated with these. These are very conventional. We drill them and we put them on production. There's no stimulation, no acid job, no fracking, uh, just very conventional in nature. And as a result, the economics are very robust, which are on the next slide. The uh, 
sunburst conventional play at $70 WTI. If you can see about six rows down the CapEx per well, these wells only cost a million bucks. We drill them in seven days. They're a million dollars all in. That's drill, complete, equip, and tie in. And at $70 oil, that generates a greater than 500% rate of return, less than a six month payout or 0.4 of a year and $4.2 million of, uh, of NPV 10. We also have, do have a fract play in, uh, in the Brooks area known as the Glockinetic, still under a year payout, $3.8 million of NPV 10. Uh, those are fract, they're about a million dollars more at uh, 2.2 million. Next, we'll move on to the Thorsby area and the, oh, sorry, one more slide. Uh, just a picture showing, uh, you know, when you see a picture of Canada, you might uh, envision a, a, some mountains and a, and a river and uh, some bears and moose and just a pristine wilderness. Uh, that's how we drill. We drill in the boring old prairies. It's flat. It's agricultural. It's a perfect area for drilling oil and gas wells. In the Brooks area, they've been drilling oil and gas wells for more than 50 years. It's uh, easy access, year round access, and uh, just a great area for oil and gas operations. Some more pictures here showing some of our facilities in the area. These were all built and designed by Blacksburg. They were built for growth and uh, they are, have a lot of capacity for our future growth. Very quickly, I'll move to the next slide, touch on Thorsby, our second core area. We just finished drilling four wells in the Brooks area. Those wells are coming on production in the next couple of weeks. And we are just about starting next week to embark on a program in the Thorsby area. We're drilling three wells in the Thorsby area. The economics are on the next slide. For $2.5 million and our tier one type curve and $70 oil, uh, we get greater than a 500% internal rate of return less than a half of a year payout at 0.4 years and a $7.8 million NPV 10 uh, based on $70 oil. Looks like I'm getting a little tight on time. There is a slide or two on the Montney. Uh, unconventional liquids rich gas play, world-class play competes with any of the unconventional plays in North America. The next slide will uh, show our land position in that area shown in green. Kalima drilled three test wells in 2018. That dashed line represents the pipeline needed to connect them to our own facilities that can handle that 11,000 BUEs per day. And lastly, on the next slide, showing a great deal of M&A activity in and around our existing Monty acreage. Uh, the bigger companies have been gobbling up all of the acreage. They want it all. Gas prices are up. LNG terminal is going in. Uh, this is that optionality I spoke of before. We can develop it ourselves, or we can possibly uh, uh, monetize it and sell it to one of these other companies who are increasing their acreage position. Next slide, please. Let's just go to the, the that one right there. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> the takeaway, quality assets, free cash flowing, uh, significant upside potential, uh, because of the free cash flow nature, we'll be debt free. We'll be actually putting cash on the balance sheet by the end of 2022 or to early 2023, as well as we can respond very quickly to rising oil prices. Our wells come on very quickly, 30 to 60 days from when they're spud, uh, allows us to be very uh, uh, reactionary to higher oil prices and increase our capex and increase our drilling programs as necessary. And that's everything. Thank you. Thanks, Jordan. Appreciate you've got a lot to get through there in that uh, 10 minutes. Yeah, I, I was um, rushing a little bit. Uh, that Motney asset, which you, you didn't have much time to cover on, um, there's a question here. Have you undertaken financial modelling to develop that asset, you know, the sort of capex required and the financial returns that it could deliver? Uh, we have. Uh, so <clears throat> ideally, uh, the next move, uh, as I mentioned, Kalima drilled three test wells and uh, bought facilities to accommodate uh, a future development. So what really has to happen next is probably a four to six well drilling program off that same pad. And once you have four to six new wells to bring on, plus the existing two uh, horizontal wells that are uh, standing waiting to be brought on production, uh, you need a, a 20 kilometer pipeline to uh, tie that into the existing facilities. All in, we're probably looking at a 40 to $50 million capital program just for the one pad. So that, that'll bring on, let's say you drill six wells plus the two existing, that's eight wells coming on into that uh, Tommy Lakes facility. 
$50 million is approximately what's needed for that. And that's one pad. There's multiple pads to be drilled uh, across our existing acreage. So if you really want to do something impactful, it's uh, $200 million could absolutely be spent on this asset and you would still have a lot of running room. It, it's big. It's huge scale for us. And, and with the oil price looking so strong, um, kind of what, what, what's the hierarchy for you in terms of your cash flow? Is it expansion or is it M&A or debt reduction or, or possibly dividends? You know what, Tim? It's it's a it's a bit of all of the above, uh, and it, it's pending oil price. If oil prices continue to rise, we're going to probably be able to do a little of all uh, because of the the amount of running room we do have on the Brooks and Thorsby assets. Uh, I I do anticipate increasing our capital program. We've done it once already. We've increased guidance once already. I don't think that 5,500 uh, 2022 exit target is going to take us till the end of next year. So that means we're going to have more wells to drill. Uh, and the more wells we drill, the more cash we generate, and uh, it, it, it just kind of recycles itself. That being said, with the free cash flow nature, it is kind of perfect for uh, a dividend model. That is something that we may consider uh, post-2022 uh, or even later in 2022, as well as M&A. Uh, there's, there's some acquisitions out there that we would like to, uh, to bolt on and tuck in that will be very complementary to our asset base. So we're, we're really keeping our options open, but we're hyper-focused at this time to, to meet that 5,500 BUE per day uh, target for next year. And Jordan, just finally, there, there is uh, 10 billion shares on issue. Is, is, has the board considered uh, consolidation at some point? There is a consolidation of the shares being considered. And uh, I would say in the next number of weeks, not months, the shareholders will be uh, likely hearing something uh, uh, in that respect. 